The UN's announced that it's hitting pause on the pullout of peacekeepers from uh, eastern Congo. This after a panel of experts uh, sent its conclusions Monday that Rwanda had sent some three to 4,000 troops to eastern Congo since 2021. The uh, panel of UN experts going even further, saying uh, that uh, Kigali had, quote, de facto control of the M23 rebellion in North Kivu province. Kathy Kadir Clifford has the story. Condemnation at the UN Security Council after a report it commissioned found Rwandan soldiers had fought alongside Tutsi-led M23 rebels in East DRC, matching, if not surpassing, the group's estimated numbers of 3,000. De facto control and direction over M23 operations also renders Rwanda liable for the actions of M23. The UN Special Envoy to the DRC told the Security Council the Rwandan government's support to the rebel group has enabled it to make major territorial gains, sparking the risk of a wider regional conflict. The security situation in eastern DRC has continued to deteriorate, reaching alarming levels of violence and civilian displacement. I am extremely concerned about the rapid expansion of the movement du 23 Mars M23 in North Kivu and the spillover in South Kivu. The special envoy also welcomed a truce in the east of the country that began last Friday. Eastern Congo has struggled with armed violence and mass killings as more than 120 groups fight for power, land and mineral resources. The UN's findings bolster Kinshasa's accusations that its neighbor has been backing the rebel group, claims that Rwanda denies. For several months, the US and the EU have joined the DRC in calling on Kigali to withdraw its forces from Congolese soil. The Democratic Republic of Congo will defend its territorial integrity while remaining open to a political resolution of the conflict with Rwanda through diplomatic means. However, this path will only be credible if Rwandan troops effectively withdraw from Congolese territory. The UN peacekeeping mission in the DRC has announced it will now pause its planned withdrawal, with no timeline set for the next phase. Joining us from Ghent in Belgium, he's a past staff member for... Uh, the group of experts on Eastern Congo for uh, the United Nations. Uh, uh, with us is uh, Josaphat Moussamba, doctoral researcher at the Department of Conflict and Development Studies of uh, Ghent University. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for associating me uh, in this debate. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to give my analysis uh, uh, on the, the So my, my first question to you is uh, the, the, uh, uh, the conclusions were very pointed, uh, very clear when it comes to Rwanda's role. Uh, where does this, first off, uh, put the United Nations now at this point, hitting pause on the, w the withdrawal of peacekeepers from Eastern Congo, which have been there now for more than two decades. Uh, what, what, what does that portend, this report? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, as you, you said, the accusation between Rwandan uh, government and Congolese government, we, we might see um, this tension, how, how, how far the Congo government perceived the rebellion. For me, uh, I think now the, the, the experts were like uh, really uh, open and clear with their conclusion. And since 2021, 2022, if you read the most report, uh, some of them were just uh, concluding uh, about the, the presence of uh, Rwanda and Defense Force in Eastern Congo, and they, uh, considering their um, techniques, I think that experts, they do have uh, proof, they do have uh, evidences for, on that, including photo and uh, other uh, testimonies. So. I don't think that this is new, but what is new is like we do have a lot of uh, um, military troops in Eastern Congo, and we don't understand why. Um, myself, I don't take position on uh, on the Rwandan side, but I think that um, there is two two way of addressing these issues. We sometimes we see rebel group, even though the uh, Rwandan troops are just backing M23, and some of them have been the trend M23. 
Mm, but we we don't I, I don't re deny and reject the fact that uh, some rebel group like Makenga and John Amani Zenze, these are Congolese, especially John Amani Zenze. I know I know personally John Amani Zenze, who is um, he comes from Bukavu, from South Kivu, and he was part of the, the wider leader of M33. Okay, so so there's a mix, is what you're saying, of different groups. But here, and specifically, they're talking about the M23. And the M23, which seemed to have petered out, then had a resurgence. How do you explain, uh, the, 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 uh, according to this report, why is Rwanda all in behind the M23? Yeah, so we, we do have, uh, as I said in the beginning, yeah, we, we, I, I address the, uh, the crisis like a transnational dimension of a civil war. And as you see, Rwanda and M23, they have a sort of common claim. Now, M23, like AFC, they have been just claiming about the return of refugees. This is one thing. Even though it, at the beginning they were just saying that Kinshasa would uh, respect their agreement because they were just saying that they had not negotiation, they, has, uh, they, they, they had uh, a lot of meeting with Kinshasa before they resumed uh, their rebellion. So now Rwanda was as, as, as well was saying that the uh, genocide like FDDR were just uh, threatening Rwanda while they were located or stationed across and, what, and on that score, what is your research found? Uh, what what so, is the reason why Rwanda is supporting the M23? Is it uh, to root out uh, uh, those uh, extremist militias uh, that are Rwandan, who, uh, Hutu militias that are Rwandan, or are there other motives? So I think this, we, we do have two reasons. The first, they, they, uh, they, 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 they they keep saying that they are supporting uh, M23 because FDR was uh, is kind of menace of uh, Rwanda. Secondly, I think there is other reason because they keep saying that Rwandan uh, speaking who are living in Congo have been under uh, menace, have been threatened by rebe uh, Congolese rebellion. So they have that's not right to protect those uh, minority. But for me, I don't think this is the true reason because we have to mix as well the agency of those rebellion. It could be the Makenga and the other and Rwandan reason. It's so let, let, let's just to make it clearer, let's let's call up a map now of, uh, 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 of the area we're talking about. And we can see on this map that uh, um, there are uh, various shades of where the M23 has been operating uh, since uh, the uh, since the year 2022, just in the past two years, and you see the different shades of where they've been, and it's interesting, uh, Joseph Musamba, because uh, there's also the question of what's the mo could the part of the motive be economic? Uh, we had the State Department on Monday putting out a warning to companies about tantalum mines recently taken over by the M23 and its backers. Uh, how much of this is about money, about coveting precious minerals? Uh, yeah, I, I, currently I, I don't have precise amount. I don't have precise amount, but I, we know that this M23 is now extending its territorial control. There is uh, a several concern about uh, taxes, about roadblocks, about uh, the way they've been controlling or imposing taxes to minors. But, but uh, I, I think we, we, we need to address these issues in two ways. The first is like to understand the way M23 and RDF have been extending their uh, territorial control to, uh, to, to, to just to stop on to, uh, to stop uh, um, they are FRDC. This one thing to be like they are controlling certain area. They need to um, master the area. This one thing. The second is like some people keep saying that they are now protecting the root of manual. This is one thing, but we know that some manual have been uh, just uh, leading or driving, going to 
some people say uh, to, to Rwanda, but we know that as well, even in South Kivu, where M23 is not controlling over, you not controlling uh, several uh, species, we know that smuggling activities have increased. And we know that, as the UN group expert, expert noticed, that the smuggling activities increased in South Kivu and it goes to Rwanda as well in Burundi, including in Uganda. It's a quick question on this because the report also singled out uh, alleges that uh, there's a role played by Uganda. What's Uganda's role? What's in it for them? So this is this is an, another issue, and I don't, I think that Uganda was like rejecting those allegations. Uganda was like or, or, uh, rejecting those allegations, but. Since um, some report and uh, investigation from Ugandan journalists, and uh, as the report said, we know that from uh, Ituri, they, 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 they had a connection with Uganda, from Ituri, from uh, North Kivu as well, and uh, wood planks uh, and like timber, we know how far, including gold, we know how gold was smuggling and take the direction to Uganda. So the involvement of Uganda from the perspective of Congo government is like, since the M23 has, um, is controlling Bunagana and Uganda has border with Congo through Bunagana. So if Uganda say is supporting Congo, why uh, it couldn't or the UPDF couldn't just fight uh, M23 in that area? They, 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 you know, so this is part of acquisitions, but I don't think that Uganda, myself, I know that Uganda and the FRDC, they do have a, a joint operation over ADF, but it's another debate, you know, it's another mm. debate. And, and, um, and unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, Joseph at Musamba, many thanks for joining us from Ghent in Belgium. Exactly. Thank you very much for giving me for this opportunity. Much more to come here on France 24, including the countdown to France versus Spain semifinals of Euro 2024 in Munich.